Welcome back to the channel. I'm really excited to have a discussion on the classic 270 Winchester. We're going to talk about how it's a lot more versatile than I think a lot of people think it is. And we're also going to discuss how the 270 Winchester is getting a 21st century update that's going to change everything for it. Hope you guys enjoy the video. I think there's a lot of ways you can describe the 270 Winchester, and certainly the lovers and haters have all sorts of ways to describe it. Whether it's the classic 270 Winchester, or Grandpa's cartridge, or a FUD cartridge, uh, I think the two words that really describe the 270 Winchester for me is, it works. I think it's safe to say the 270 is a bit outdated, at least the cartridge design's outdated. It's not a flashy cartridge by any means. It doesn't have a sharp shoulder, but it just works, guys. It, uh, shooting bullets pretty darn fast. It's known as a flat cartridge, and, you know, it just gets the job done. Now, briefly, I just want to go over its performance. Common bullet weights are from 100 grain to 150 grain, and it's all going really fast. So 100 grain, 3450, I bet you can get 35. A 110 grain at 33. A 130 grain, which is the most common bullet used for hunters, 3100 feet per second. 140 grain at 3000 feet per second. And then traditionally the biggest bullet you could shoot until recently, we'll talk about that later, is the 150 grain. So you're getting 2,900 feet per second. So what are the downsides to the 270 Winchester? I think there's two main downsides to this. Number one is bullet versatility. So what do I mean by that? Well, you are you really only have 100 grain up to 150 grain, traditionally. So you don't really have heavy bullets. And second downside to the 270 is that all of its factory rifles come in a 1 in 10 twist. And so it's pretty limited on the bullets you can shoot. So the heaviest uh, Hornady has you shooting is a 150 grain. And the BC is fine, but when you compare it to 7mm, 6.5, and 30 caliber, uh, well, this is lacking quite a bit until recently. Let's get to the point of the video. In 2021, Browning and Winchester introduced a new cartridge that could take advantage of heavier high BC bullets. And so the 6.8 Western came out in 2021. And so bullet companies started making higher BC bullets, like this guy here, the 165 grain Acubon Long Range, with a, a fairly good BC of 0 0.620, kind of the same BC as a 140 grain in 6.5. And so I would say the 6.8 Western's premier bullet is this Acubon Long Range. Because of the 6.8 Western and now the new 27 Nosler, companies are making more and more heavier high BC bullets. November of last year, a fun channel that tests the expansion of all types of bullets and all certain cartridges decided to test the 165 Acubon long range in a 270 Winchester short magnum. And I was astonished because I was under the impression that in order to shoot the higher BC bullets like the 165 Acubon long range, you are going to need a one and eight twist and almost all factory 270 WSMs come with a one and 10 twist, just like the 270 Winchester. So I talked to frontline rejects. We even had a podcast talking about it and he just decided to try it. And lo and behold, his rifle loved it. He was able to stabilize it and he had great accuracy and performance from that bullet. Fast forward to, well, last week, and, you know, there was plenty of these bullets in my local store, and I, I just had to try them. I had to find out, can this old 270 Winchester stabilize these 165 Acubon long range? Let me show you the results. Now, I know what you're thinking. These groups are nothing to brag about, and I completely agree with you. A two-inch group is just not good. But I wanted to point out something. There's no keyholing. This is the 165 Acubon long range. I used Reloader 22. 
I got a top velocity of 2,811 feet per second, which is pretty good. And from what I can tell, they're stabilizing quite well. Perfect little holes. Now, this group's about an inch and a half, so I definitely have some work to do to get this sub M away. But I'm super excited because it turns out the 270 Winchester can shoot these 165 Acubon long range. To kind of show what kind of holds the 270 Winchester back, I'm going to compare it to one of the most popular cartridges, one of the most overhyped cartridges, um, the 65 Creedmoor. Now, this is hand loaded info, a 143 grain ELDX at 2750. Yeah, you could probably get a little more the longer barrel. The 6.5 Creedmoor definitely isn't near as flat as shooting as a 270 Winchester, but its high BC bullets start making up for that. Once you get out to 400 and at 500 yards, your energy is 1,364 foot pounds. Now let's compare that to the 270 with a more traditional bullet. We're going to use the 129 grain LRX at 3,100 feet per second, and obviously you can get more than that. At 500 yards, though, the 6.5 Creedmoor has more energy. 270 Winchester's just lower BC bullets can't keep up with the 6.5 Creedmoor's high BC bullets until now. Let's just get through the 6.5 Creedmoor ballistics real fast. 143 grain ELDX, 2750 year muzzle energy, 2,402 foot-pounds. And, you know, out to 400 yards, the bullet's going 2,200 feet per second, 1,536 foot-pounds, and 28.7 inches a drop. Um, not great, not bad. And then out to 500 yards, I don't think this cartridge is a 500-yard cartridge, especially for elk. But you're going to get 1,364 foot-pounds, like I just said, and 51.7 inches a drop. Moving on to the 270 Winchester with now 165 grain Acubon long range using the ballistics that I just got in a 22 inch barrel. So this is on a slow end. You're almost at 2,900 foot pounds of energy up to 400 yards. You have 1,853 foot pounds of energy, 300 more foot pounds than a 6.5 Creedmoor. Now with traditional old bullets, the 6.5 Creedmoor was already matching at 400 yards, the same energy. 27.3 inches of drop, so the 270 is still a little bit flatter than out to 500 yards. You almost have a 300 foot-pound advantage still with the 165 Acubon long range, and it is still a little bit flatter. This is game-changing. Well, the 270 Winchester kind of stomps out the 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, with its higher BC bullets, you can shoot in a 110 twist. So, I think it's more apt to compare the 270 to what everyone probably thought was a superior cartridge is the 6.5 PRC. But, with this data, they're actually neck and neck, or toe, to, toe and toe. Let me show you. So, the 6.5 PRC with a 143 grain ELDX hand loaded to 3,000 feet per second. You could probably get more with a 26 inch barrel, but 3,000 feet per second is pretty safe. With a 24 inch barrel, your energy is at 1,659 foot pounds at 500 yards. They are really close to each other, the 270 and the 6.5 PRC, which kind of makes sense seeing how they both have basically the same powder capacity. Lastly, I wanted to talk about something that certainly isn't breaking news, but for those that are not aware, this is Browning. This is an X-Bolt Western Hunter, and I want to show you something when you chamber it in 270 Winchester. It comes in a 24-inch barrel, which is pretty cool. But let's look at the twist rate. Seven and a half. Watch out. I think we're going to see a resurgence of the 277 caliber and I think we're going to get a lot more bullet options that are heavy and high BC.